name is Kenny Tan. Welcome to the Real Bees Academy. On this channel, I train people how to get a real estate license in the state of California. Once they get the license, I also train them on how to become a realtor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a great listing presentations. Coming right up. How to make a listing presentation. Now, uh, this is at the request of one of our agents who is thinking about doing a listing presentation. Now, some experienced agents, they don't normally have to do a professional listing presentation. Usually, some people just get their connections. They just get, get their list through the connection they already have, okay? Now, so they don't really have to do a formal listing presentation. You know, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Other times, uh, even my own uh, connection, I will still do a, a formal listing presentation, especially when they tell me that I got competition. So uh, when you go for, before you go for a listing presentation, there are a few things you need to, uh, to prepare. Uh, one of them is your listing agreement. See, the thing is, when you prepare your listing agreement, I suggest that you suggest and you can propose a listing agreement. When you propose a listing agreement, I'll show you my proposed listing agreement. I'll put it on the screen so you can see it. This is a listing package. It has the this agency disclosure on the first page. That's standard, so I know that's part of the package. And it's got the possible representation of more than one buyer or seller. That's also part of the package. And then it's got the wire fraud and electronic funds transfer advisory. That's part of the package. Okay. Now, as far as the residential listing agreement, my proposed uh, listing agreement, uh, typically I will, I will propose a six months listing. That's pretty standard for me. And then you fill out the rest of uh, the listing agreement. Okay. And uh, for this particular client of mine, I agreed to pay for their closing costs at closing. And then also I agreed to pay for their home inspection and home warranty, okay, if I ever closes. So I think it was, it was okay because it was a 5% listing agreement. So that worked out, okay. I've ultimately got the property sold. So this is one that is in St. Carlos. And I still split two and a half to the other agent. Now in Southern California, you can get away with 2%, especially in the market like this. So I would just put 2% in Southern California. Okay. So you get your listing agreement already. You want to make it as easy as possible for your potential seller. Okay. And you should have this on hand already. Don't worry about, you know, the seller making changes but make it easy for the seller. So you, if you have the opportunity to close the sale, you gotta close it the first time you meet with the seller, okay? So that's how you prepare the residential listing agreement. So the next thing that you want to prepare, that will be the listing presentation. Now for my listing presentation, now because this is in, uh, in the peninsula, I use uh, MLS listing for my CMA. So you have, you can actually combine your CMA. You know, a CMA is just a CMA. Now this is how I did my uh, uh, <clears throat> CMA. I got my active listings and sold listings. Sometimes I may put cancel listing here. The only reason I would put cancel listing is uh, just to demonstrate to the seller that if we don't price it right. So sometimes I just want to use it uh, to make my sales speech. See, sometimes uh, when you go do a listing presentation, if the seller does not like the price that you propose, they want something that is higher. So it may be a good idea to get some cancel listing ready. So the cancel listing, oftentimes they are canceled for several reasons. Uh, Sometimes it's overpriced, so they end up being uh, canceled listings. Other times it has nothing to do with the price. It has something to do with the seller having some personal issues or with 
sometimes it could be the tenants that are still there. It makes it when the tenants are there, it makes it very difficult for showings. So in this case, I chose not to put in the cancel listings. So it's just active and sold. When I go for a listing presentation, I show this uh, summary to the seller. Okay, the active and the soul. Okay, the active means that that is the dream land, right? I call it the dream land because the prices are what the seller dream to have, but they may not have that price. So that's what active listings mean. Now, soul listings is what we call reality. So active listings, I call it dreamland. Soul listings, I call it reality. So when you call, go talk to the seller, so you present the active listing. So you wind up having a price that is after consulting the active listing prices. The active listings let the seller know who their competitions are. So they know how much competition there is, and then they can price it based on the, the amount of competition that they have. So listing is just to make sure that we don't uh, overprice it too much. All right, next one, uh, not important. It's just part of the CMA. So just went through that one. Okay. The rest is part of the CMA package, so I'll skip those. Uh, I usually like to include the photographs of the properties that I want to discuss with my seller. Okay. So you include that. That's part of the package. It's, it's it's a selection that you make, okay? And uh, of course, this is also part of the package. You know, you just include it in case you need to use it, but I hardly use them. The next one is actually more important is my action plan. So uh, this is just part of the package. No need to go into it. The very last one is the most important one. So I always attach my marketing plan to my CMA. Uh, that way my seller knows. I'll be able to explain to my seller how I'm going to market the property. Everybody have their own marketing plan. Your marketing plan may look very different from my marketing plan. Okay. So because of that, uh, this is so uh, useful references only. And I call it the exclusive 28-step guaranteed selling system because there are 28 steps in here, okay? Uh, so here you want to talk about pre-marketing. Pre-marketing, basically, you need to consult with the seller. So when you go talk to the seller, when you meet the seller for the first time, one of the first things you're going to do, and I always do that just to build some rapport with my seller, and I think it's very effective. See, when you go into uh, the property, before you sit down and start talking to the seller, your first request is, may I, may I walk around the property? Or would you be, usually I want my seller to be with me when I'm walking around the property because I can actually build rapport with the seller even before I sit down with the seller. Uh, to do my formal listing presentation. So you can build rapport by walking with the seller. As you walk with the seller through every corner in the house, you have conversations with your seller. You know, you ask questions of the seller. Sometimes they they like the fact that you ask questions and especially, uh, you know, you, you, you sound very professional when you ask questions. That's a great way to build rapport. And when, when you walk around the house, when you're talking to your seller, that is an excellent opportunity to build rapport. Make sure you have a good eye contact with your seller when you're talking to them. The eye contact is the rapport building must. Okay, Always pay attention to eye contact. And from the eye contact, you can communicate. You know, communication involves uh, verbal and nonverbal communication. You can use your eyes to express your feelings toward the other person. See, when you talk to the seller, when you look at your seller in the eyes, you can communicate the emotion of enthusiasm. 
just by looking at your eyes, the seller can sense your enthusiasm and they can sense, uh, you know, how happy or how uh, appreciative that they gave you the opportunity for you to do a listing presentation. And by maintaining good contact with them, you can sort of communicate that I am very interested in your house. Uh, I'm very interested in what you're telling me. Okay, those are the things that build rapport. Okay, the other things that build rapport are that is beyond the scope of today's presentation. Uh, I taught the Fremont people, but uh, I will share with you next time in other training. Okay, today we're not going to talk, go into about NLP. Okay, NLP is one way to build rapport. Uh, just to give you a few highlights, uh, certainly one of the things that you're going to talk about with the seller during the listing presentation is what are the sort of repairs you're recommending the seller make. You know, before you start talking about making repairs, because seller don't like, many sellers don't like to, to talk about spending money. See, when you ask them to make repairs, it's talk, you're talking about spending money. The way I would approach about making repairs, I would do it after I've gone through the property with the seller. Now, when you go through the property with the seller, you need to ask questions that make them think. For example, one of the, my questions I'll ask the seller is, how old is the roof? How old is the carpet? Do you have any uh, problems with leaks? Or do you have any termite problems that you're aware of? Okay, these are all the questions that you can ask. You can ask them, uh, how old is their air conditioner? You can ask them, how old is the water heater? How old is the washer and dryer? All of these things, dishwasher, stove, everything. Okay, now you do that just to make them think about their property so that when you, when you make recommendations to make repairs, uh, you know, they already start feeling like, hey, you know what? Uh, thank you for asking me those questions because I think that uh, uh, you are very professional. You let me know what I need to do to get the property ready. And then by the time you sit down, you know, you go through and say, well, you know, because you have a leaky roof, certainly uh, if you are a buyer, uh, you want the seller to have the leaky roof fixed before you close escrow. Now, worst case, a buyer won't even consider making an offer if the leaky roof is not fixed, right? So when you sit down with the seller, you can actually ask the seller, would you uh, make an offer on my, on, on my property if I'm trying to sell you a property that has a roof that leaks that's not fixed yet? Ask them to put themselves in the buyer's shoe. So sometimes you make them think if their answer is, no, no, no. I certainly want the seller to get it fixed. So then you advise them, why not get it fixed now, then later? Because when you get, get it fixed later, uh, the buyer is going to slash your price. Uh, you know, once, once they slash your price, it's going to be a lot. And uh, oftentimes they slash your price, if, even if you get them into uh, escrow. They'll slash your price during the escrow. At that time, you would have invest uh, quite a bit of time on this buyer you will be uh, you will not say no to the buyer you are less likely to say no to your buyer especially after uh, you've been in escrow for two weeks or longer right so these are some of the things uh, this is pre-marketing okay now staging consultation i can't tell you how important staging can be especially if you are not marketing the property as a fixer upper. Now, it took me a long time to sell that San Carlos property because that was a 40 year old single owner property. Uh, because there is so much money that had to be invested, over 100,000 to fix up the place just to put it on the market. So our strategy at that time was to sell it as a fixer upper. And in the description, it, it's reflected that it's a fixed upper. So uh, that's what our strategy 
it took us a long time. I think it took us like four months or longer uh, to get the to find the right buyer. Fortunately, we did find the right buyer. It wasn't an easy property to sell. But if it is something that is good to go, you don't have to make a lot of repairs. Seriously consider doing professional staging. Now for the one in San Carlos, house is in such a bad shape. I don't think uh, staging, uh, it, it's, it's money well spent. That's why I decided not to do any staging. But if it's a good shape, probably it's good shape, highly, highly, highly recommend uh, professional staging. Uh, you know, Gene Riley and I, we did a listing in Vista, San Diego. That was a difficult, super difficult property to sell. And we decided that, hey, you know, we have to buy the bullet, uh, spend the money and on the staging. I think we, we spent close to $6,000 on the staging. Uh, we split the staging cost. Ultimately, we got it sold because there was staging. If there wasn't any staging, it would have been tough. So that's certainly a, a discussion that you need to have a, uh, with the seller. I know Compass has a business model uh, that allows the, uh, that requires the seller to reimburse the agent if the agent pays the, for the staging. The reimbursement will occur uh, if and when the escrow closes or if and when the owner decides to take it off the market. So, uh, so the agent's investment is protected, but staging is definitely a conversation you need to have with the seller. Okay. Uh, that's a, that's a, a couple of highlights for the pre-marketing, but I can let you have the rest of the, um, uh, marketing plan now certainly you want to talk to the seller about uh you want to talk to the seller about uh whether you need to take videos uh, of course you know i'm so much into video right now so if i take the listing i definitely will have a conversation with my seller about video taking okay uh, marketing photos uh, certainly you want to show a few samples of the marketing photos the seller needs to see samples of the marketing photos that you're going to use so you want to show some of your best uh, listings that show really nice photos, you know, to the seller just to convince them that, hey, you know, if you give the listing to me, I only do professional photography. Same thing. Uh, if you give the um, listing to me, I only do HD video or more. Uh, better yet, if you can handle 4K video, you want to show the seller that you can do 4K video. Now, some of the cameras actually can shoot in 4K, so you want to impress the seller and say, hey, you know, I shoot in 4K video. Uh, you can show them a sample of flyers or postcards. You know what, these days, flyers and postcards are really becoming less and less important. So I wouldn't really spend a lot of time on it. Rather, I'll send them, I will show them the, the video that I made, okay? And uh, of course, then I go into my selling system. Now, uh, I will let my seller know that I have the ability to find buyers that are ready, willing, and able. Okay, I will show them that I have my YouTube channels that has close to 6,000 subscribers. So I can certainly promote uh, uh, their property to my YouTube channel, okay? That's certainly uh, a uh, value proposition that I have. Now, certainly, uh, if you're a sentiment agent, uh, you can make the same value proposition to the potential uh, seller. Uh, staging, we talked about that. High quality picture, talked about that. Professional lighting, yeah, of course. And then the pre-marketing to area, office, realtor networks, and personal. Now, I used to have a subscription to uh, a company that allows me to get the email blast. I lost that one. So uh, don't put this one on your marketing plan. Uh, you can certainly uh, get the email list some other ways, but not with the convenience that I used to have. I no longer can email blast. Certainly, if you have the ability to email blast local realtors, that is a good value proposition to your seller. An average, an average seller doesn't 
they don't really understand, but it sounds uh, pretty uh, attractive to be able to do email blast to the local realtor, but don't do it. Don't put it on your marketing plan unless you're gonna do it. Okay. Now, personal circle is great because, uh, you know, one of the things that you can show, in my case, you know, you, you have connections on LinkedIn. You tell them how many connections you have on LinkedIn and you tell them uh, you will promote your listings to uh, your connections on LinkedIn. So certainly that's something that you can put on your uh, marketing plan. You can be very specific. Uh, you can tell them, okay, I'll promote, if I if it's a YouTube video, I'll promote it to all of my channels uh, that are relevant to my, uh, my YouTube video. I also promote it to uh, uh, WeChat and I promote it to Facebook or Instagram, okay? Uh, certainly, you can put that on your marketing plan. Coming soon, you, if you do post a coming soon sign, if you do, do plan on posting coming soon sign, you can put that on your marketing plan, okay? Uh, PLS, uh, it's just a personal listing site. This is an off-market listing site. Honestly, though, I'm going to delete that one because I don't do it anymore. Suddenly, I think it will be great if you can put it on your marketing plan that you're going to establish a unique website for that listing. Now, if you're going to do that, I think it doesn't cost very much, maybe $40 or $50 to set up a uh, unique website for your listing, okay? And uh, that unique website, uh, can be used uh, for marketing purposes. You can put that on your marketing plan if you actually do that. If you don't do that, don't put it on your marketing plan. Promote to agents at company sales meeting because during the pandemic, we don't do that anymore. So you have to modify it. You can say promote to agents uh, in our uh, line group for our agents. Okay, also during... Uh, you know, in the future, we can certainly uh, promote it during our weekly sales training. That's something that I plan to do, okay? As you can see, there are just so many things that you can put, you know, I'll, I'll let you have this template, okay? And then you just modify it. Promote video to Instagram, Twitter, yeah, Twitter, Pinterest. Oh my God, Pinterest. I didn't realize I put Pinterest here, okay? WeChat, Google Plus, okay. Uh, custom website, I already talked about that, okay. And then phase two is talking about, well, how to set the due dates for the offers. You're planning on setting due dates. In other words, how are you gonna handle the offers that come in? You have to have that on your marketing plan, okay. The seller likes to know, you know, how you're gonna handle those offers. And then phase three, Phase two is uh, also includes about communication with your seller. And also phase two will cover things like how offers are presented to the seller, how you go about negotiating the best price and term for the seller, and how you uh, prepare for the signing of the sales contract, how you open escrow and how uh, you close the escrow. These are things you can discuss with the seller during phase two. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Most sellers don't care about phase two. Okay, some do, but so you need to kind of briefly mention it. Now you can actually send them your marketing plan before you actually meet with them. I think that's really helpful because there are some sellers that will read your marketing plan before then. Okay. Now phase three is talking about what if the property doesn't sell? You see, it's good to put something like that in your marketing plan, just to show them that you are organized. You are prepared for the worst case scenario. So, you know, what if the property doesn't sell? What are the some of the steps you can take uh, to handle a situation where the property doesn't sell? Okay, so that's the entire uh, marketing plan, okay, that, uh, that I have, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a lot more because I'm gonna include a drone shot if you're actually planning on doing drone shot. And uh, I'm also gonna include a neighborhood video scene. As you know, that's a real, that's a new thing for me. So that's it for the um, 
listening presentation. I hope you learn a lot. And of course, I will put down links in the description. That way you can download this thing and use it however you want to use it. Just make sure whatever that you put on your marketing plan, it has to be truly reflective of what your plan of action is.